Hello survivors, welcome back to another video of Death Frontier 2. My name is Jimmy Shreds and today I'm going to show you the guide, complete guide for this summary event. We're going to go through how to uh, get materials to craft weapons and items and what you need to do. We're going to go through everything. I'm also going to leave down in below in the description my socials if you want to follow me there. And I'm also going to leave my YouTube membership if you feel like supporting me. Thank you for all of you who've been supporting me uh, through the YouTube membership. I really appreciate you from, from the bottom of my heart. Also, thank you for all the likes, shares, subs, comments as always. I'm not going to keep it any longer. Let's roll. Now, first, we're going to talk about how to get uh materials which are called salvaged hardware how to get those you can get them by doing everyday missions from grave with outpost npc called mockingbird which is this person we're gonna talk to them right now i'm gonna say something blah blah, blah. you accept that okay you get 25 salvaged hardware from uh this quest you need to be high level and properly geared to do this mission do not attempt to do this solo if you're low level or not geared properly if you have multiple characters you can do it on each once a day so this mission can be done once a day on each character so if you have 10 characters you can get 25 salvaged uh, hardware uh, salvaged hardware scrap or no salvaged uh, hardware yeah you can get 25 times 10 example that's 250 a day just from the missions and also make sure to save uh, the extra mutant remains which you will get uh, once you kill the enemies and save it in the car for the days when you do like do not feel like playing so you can just turn the mission in now let me show you where you need to go and how it's done now, in the current map rotation, there are two mutant layers. That's how it's called. First one is located... Where was it? Here. This is the first one. Mutant layer. Okay, this is the first one at the library. And the second one is here at the Archbrook. So we currently have two of them. Just to make sure. So do not miss. Okay, I think I didn't miss any. Yep, we currently have two. And you can do these two. Now, I'm going to head there and show you... What I need to do and how it's done and explain you everything. See you there. Okay, we are in front of the mutant slayer, which is located right here. I'm gonna go in. And when you're gonna go in, you will see a bone um uh, pile, right? And when you're gonna talk to this, the boss will spawn from this door. It's gonna be a burning uh it's gonna be on flames, Reaper with tentacles. He's gonna have a lot of HP, so I have that on mind. Now what you want to do, you want to time, there you go, it's the sound of choir, but it's a reaper. You want to time your uh, dodge and such things. Keep the distance, shoot for the head, keep the distance. When he gets close, just run, keep running, he's going to jump when he, what? let me show you, you see that, just time it. It's not hard, he does the sound when he jumps. You can also run away from his jumps, so it's not that difficult. And that's it. That's how it's done. He's dead. There is another one. I'm gonna show you the second layer now. Okay, now we are in front of the uh, another one, which is at Archbrook. I'm gonna go in. So why is there two? In case you get killed in the first one, you always have a second one. So you have a second try for the mission. Or if you get disconnected, so the boss disappears and such. It's the same thing. You're gonna talk to the bomb pile and the enemy is going to spawn uh, this is how the item looks like we have two here we're going to have a um, twin she's going to be on fire and also have tentacles so when she spits you want to move to the right now watch what i'm going to do keep the distance as well shoot for the head time the stance dodge that she's going to spit any second there we go and move to the right when she does that and there you go i have very powerful gear so she died very fast I'm gonna loot it to show you the item again and there we go now let's move on to the other way of getting the uh, the uh, hardware parts uh, salvage hardware yeah so you can also get uh, salvage hardware from purple zones which spawn every 20 minutes these are purple zones currently there is only low level one which gives uh, salvage hardware so you have four purple zones which spawn every 20 minutes. You need to be high level for the high level ones and uh, have, re have a really good gear. Like level 51 and level 40, 45. Do not, do not fight those. Just you, you, you really need good gear. High mobility stats are must. Do not solo if you are not geared properly. If you're a low level, try to search for parties in MMO lobby doing them. 
uh, I'm gonna show you the preview of how these purple zones are uh, look like and uh, how it's done. Have in mind, there is not much for me to tell on how to do this except to, to time your reloading and stun and keep the distance. Now we are moving to the part, what items to craft. I will skip all low level items unless you are really uh, all level and won't play much, which means you won't make it to level 50 during this event to farm for level 50 gear. So we're skipping low level ones. Now, my first craft would be 100% these Sunset Drifter Sandals. Why? Due to the very high spin stats, no such item has uh, that high spin stats. Like, stats are pretty much double the maximum you can get, which is 25%. As you can see, like, uh, on my uh, Elite Combat Boots, the maximum sprint cooldown and sprint speed is 25, while sprint duration is uh, 50. So, sprint speed and sprint cooldown are literally doubled. Sprint cooldown is kind of not, because the maximum sprint cooldown you can get is 41. But, the, the, the issues are really really good i really advise you to go for these as your first craft uh second craft depends on you if you're gonna if you're not gonna play in chain so you can go for the helmet which is this one sun drifters hat if you're planning to play in chainsaw which is this one i do craft chainsaw second due to its very good stats this chainsaw is weaker than gore trimmer but it has really good and useful stats for boss hunting and purple zones uh, for the third craft, helmet and why has no find unique HP or movement speed as the previous ones or the dodge cooldown as we had on the previous helmets. If you have no better helmet, craft it. There is much better helmets for chainsaws and in general gun builds from this one. Uh, but the good thing about this helmet is it's free. I mean, it's just you need 50k and you, you can craft as many as you want to min max if you want. So all you need is time and just 50k uh, same goes for the sandals and chainsaws fourth craft would definitely be uh bloodied uh pouches the i mean it's it's up to you but i would go for it i do craft bloodied uh, pouches and try to sell them or or use it on my clothes to improve damage output that's how i'll do it and fifth is obviously elite enhancer which you can use on rare items and test your luck with stats to make uh, item elite or sell uh, elite enhancing service to a player uh, so let's move on to the max stats for the items that i know for sure so for the uh, sandals 50 percent sprint speed and duration uh, 41 sprint cooldown and 9 percent jog speed those are the max stats for the sandals max stats for the chainsaw are 50 percent attack speed body damage, infected, mutated, and incoming sun recovery, and minus 25 incoming damage is the maximum. When it comes to the helmet, the maximum stats are 53% mutated, 53% attack speed, 25 incoming sun threshold, 25 incoming sun recovery, 53 body damage, and 53 headshot damage. Now the very important question, is it worth it to to uh, upgrade for credits and hence reverse uh, arm to reverse reach 
I don't play chainsaws. Uh, I still didn't try it. I have it. I have all these items. I have them crafted. But... Uh, what I want to say is, if you are going to main chainsaws, I definitely would. Why? No, no, I'll, I'll tell you why. It's, it's, uh, stats are better than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which you can buy it from the market. And, but it's weaker than a Gore Trimmer. But, this weapon is DPS weapon. I definitely, I'm always 100% to go for, um, 500 credits upgrades on the DPS weapons. Always. Like on the weapons with the slow attack speed that, that, that do not have high DPS, I'm I'm against it. So in my opinion, definitely go for it. And we have come to the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please leave down in the comments what you think. And you know, as I said, in the description, I'll leave socials, my YouTube membership and such. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask like any kind of question related to the game or something, you know, whatever you have. So thank you so much for all the support as always. And I'll see you in another video of the Frontier 2. Till next time, guys. Peace.